This week on the Racer X Show, the Redlands Ranch was all abuzz for a week of racing to decide 36 national champions. We have a look and chat with one rider who put on a once in a lifetime performance. Also, AMA Pro Flat Track was turning right and jumping it up. See what happened in Castle Rock. It was a slamming good time. And we catch up with three time Mountain Dew ATV MX champion Chad Weenan. He's got an advantage over his competition. Find out what it is. That and some moto news. So, here we go. Hello and welcome to the Racer X Show presented by Chaparral Motorsports. I'm Greg White. Thanks for joining our racing highlight and news show. We have a ton of things to see, people to talk with, and great info for you. So let's get started. The Racer X Show with Greg White is being presented by Chaparral Motorsports. Visit Chaparral Motorsports online at chapmoto.com. We'll start you off with the Rocky Mountain ATV MC AMA Amateur National Motocross Championships presented by Amsoil from Loretta Lynn's Ranch in Hurricane Mills, Tennessee. As the largest amateur event in the world, Loretta's, as most people call it, has set the stage for incredible careers for most of the biggest names in the sport. RC, McGrath, Pastrana, Stewart, just to name a few. Now the classes to look at to see who is going from the amateur ranks to pro, 250A, Open Pro Sport and 450A. We'll start you off with the 250A class. Racing done at Loretta's is simple. Three moto formats spread over five days of racing. The rider with the lowest points is the champ. So if you go 1-1-1, one, 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 that's three points. You can't get any lower than that. And that's exactly what Florida's RJ Hampshire did. Even with no time qualifying and a horrible number picked out of the bucket for gate choice, which gave number 22 RJ an outside gate position, he was still able to pull it off. And there are some very talented racers behind him. For the first moto, it was Chris Aldridge on the Kawasaki in second. Marshall Welton, a great job in third. Check out fourth place finisher, last year's 450A winner, Luke Rensland in fourth. In the second moto, it was RJ again. This time, Rensland bettered his fourth with a second and looked to be the only rider who might give Hampshire a run for it. A great moto for number 73, Aaron Plessinger, in third. Note Zach Commons in fourth. With one more checkered flag to take, RJ Hampshire did not disappoint, sweeping the weekend for the 250A class with moto win number three. Rensland's second, Nick Gaines in the mix on the box. For RJ, his first amateur championship and a well-deserved number one plate held high over his head. The overall has Rensland's second, with his 4-2-2 combo, Chris Aldridge followed by Baker and Commons, a solid fit spot. On to the Open Pro Sport class, a class which allows for 250 or 450s to be ridden. It was RJ Hampshire again. RJ's been hooked up with riding coach Tim Ferry and runs number 22 in honor of his good friend Chad Reed. Hampshire has turned his program around in the past two years and came to Loretta is ready to prove a point. The Moto 1 result looked the same as the 250A class, with a checkered flag. Aaron Plessinger behind RJ, Colt Nichols on a Kawasaki in third spot, and rounding out the top 10 was David McFarland. Moto 2 and RJ again, five races and five wins so far. The podium order was reversed this time. Nichols taken second away from Plessinger, setting up a great battle for the runner-up spot in the final Moto 3 which ended up like this. I think RJ might be short for win. Colt Nichols holds off Plessinger for the runner-up spot. Marshall Welton recovers from his eighth in Moto2 back into fourth. RJ Hampshire with his second number one plate before hitting off to be a pro. The overall that's easy. On his RJ Hampshire goes three for three in the open pro sport. A total of six for six on the weekend. Nichols second best of the week as Welton just off the rostrum in fourth. Now let's take you to Hurricane Mills where Jason Wigan is standing by. Jason? Thanks Greg. We wrap it up here at the Rocky Mountain ATV MC AMA Amateur National Motocross Championships presented by Amsoil. A great rags to riches tale with our Horizon Award winner RJ Hampshire. Not only had he never won a title at Loretta's before, but only a few years ago he wasn't really even on the radar as one of the top riders to watch. Uh, his family has a racing background. His sister had actually won a title here, but as far as the actual money to come out here and compete at the top level, uh, times were tough. 
There's actually a family, the Grondles, behind the scenes that helped pick him up. They hooked him up with Tim Ferry, who's certainly a legend in the sport. And through Ferry, he got faster, he got more attention, more support. Now, with that very powerful Amsoil Geico Factory Connection Honda team, he was able to take it to another level at the ranch and swept all six motos. First time anyone's done that in the two premier classes here since 1995. And he'll be racing at Unadilla as a pro in just a few days. And the thing I notice about this guy is the rising confidence. He's so strong right now because of the performance here. He believes he can go to Unadilla and do real damage, maybe put it up on the podium or at least in the top five. And when you come in believing, well, I guess that means you can go out and actually do it. So we'll have to keep our eyes on him. We are here with RJ Hampshire, your Horizon Award winner and the first rider in almost 20 years to sweep all six motos in the pro classes here at Loretta's. And you had won a title before this season. It's got to be incredible, this feeling. Yeah, you know, it's been amazing. Uh, I've wanted to my whole life and, you know, to finally get it and get two and two at the same uh, year is amazing and sweep all six classes. You know, I've never thought I'd be able to do that. And, uh, you know, I worked hard for it, so I'm pumped to be up here. And the big story is, of course, you're going to Unadilla as a pro next weekend with one of the strongest teams in the sport. So how do you think you'll do? Um, you know, I'm excited. Like I said, I worked hard for it. So uh, I think I belong, like, top five. And, uh, you know, I'm going for the win. If I, I feel like if I have the speed to win, you know, there's no, no difference. So, um, you know, I'm going there with uh, confidence and hold my head high no matter what happens. I think you guys see the swagger that you get when you come out here and do well at Loretta's. And I want to remind you folks that you come up from a racing family. Your sister's actually done this down here, too. Yeah, she has uh, 2005, I believe. She uh, always rubbed it in my face for uh, you know having one over me, but uh, you know now I got that extra one, so uh, time to give it back. All right, he's going to the next level. We will see R.J. Hampshire and his Horizon Award next week at Unadilla. Thanks. Now to dirt track and some TT action. Now you've seen these guys and gals racing it up NASCAR style. You know, turn left, go straight. Turn left, go straight. Rinse and repeat. But not this time. This time it's TT action, which means thrown in the mix of left-handers, a jump, and a right-hand corner. And the normal Harley Kawasaki Triumph Twins are out. Motocross 450s converted to dirt trackers are in. Easy enough, right? So to Castle Rock, Washington, we go for flat track highlights. For the 25 lap main event, it was number 54, Mikey Rush, who put his Casio Rush Racing Honda on pole. Rush had two career wins in this class, but no TT just yet. When race action got going, it was Rush with a great hole shot that led him into turn one. Number nine, Jared Mees on his Montgomeryville cycle Honda in tow. Working lap four, it's the same up front with number one, Brad Baker on the Brothers Power Sports Honda in third. Number 17, Henry Wiles on the Don's Kawasaki KX450F right behind. Baker looking frisky on the inside would take over the second spot. And then after the jump, Wiles on the green machine forces his way by number nine, Mees. That was for third. We move to lap 10, and Wiles is hounding Baker for second. A miscue from Baker, trying to get the drive, opens up the door, and Wiles goes by. And the 17 is charging. Working lap 18, and Rush has been doing a great job of holding off the advances of Wiles until Henry had enough. Slam! Mike Nascar, Rubbin's racing. Come on! That was that. Rush couldn't mount a charge. So for the 25th time, Henry Wiles snatches victory in the premier class. And for Rush, well, it's nothing but love between the two. It's all good. A great scrap for the final spot on the podium saw Baker barely hold off Mies and J.D. Beach, the factory Yamaha road racer, on a break, a solid fifth. Points leader Smith in 10th. That would hurt. But today, it belongs to Henry Wiles. This was the backup bike coming into today. We, uh, we, we plan on riding a different bike, so, you know, it's, uh, it's funny how things work out, but uh, at the end of the day, they, they worked out awesome, and I, uh, I got into my buddy Mikey pretty hard. He's my favorite guy to ride with out here. I kept, uh, you know, he's my favorite dirt tracker, and that's definitely not how I wanted to pass him. I wanted to pass him clean, but, uh, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad it was all good, and Mikey, he's, he's one of the funniest, funnest guys out here, so he's a good sport about it, but... Uh, it feels great to win. We've had a lot of struggles here, and you know, I saw the five lap to go board, and I knew uh, I knew where I was fast on, you know, compared to Mikey, and I didn't know where he was after, you know, we kind of got together, and you know, it was it was funny, you know, he even said to me, "Man, second kind of sucks," and I said, "I know, I know, it absolutely does," and that's why I was going for it, and, and fortunately, it uh, 
race tech suspension, Jimmy Wood, it was, uh, it all worked out great. But like I said, five laps to go, you know, I was thinking about a lot of different things. I was thinking about wanting to win on one of these clay tracks, wanting to win at Castle Rock, you know, uh, trying to uh, get, get a little closer to Chris Carr's all-time TT record. And I mean, all those things are, to me, very much an honor, and I feel very blessed to be in this position. Now here it is again, Smith was leading, now Mies with his fourth, takes the top spot back, now by sixth, heading in tonight's race at Sturgis in Rapid City, South Dakota. Now we move you to the pro singles class, where Brisbane, California's Dominic Calindris dominated this one. Fastest heat to sit on pole, the whole shot, and within a few turns, the 66Y motorcycle superstore rider on a Honda CRF 450F started to check out. Fast forward to the final lap. Scotty Dubler with the call. White flag still out. Here comes the checkered flags right now. Double checkered flag. Here's your main event winner, Dominic Calendres. Back to back wins in the pro singles. Here comes second place. Dash and Davis Fisher gets on the podium. Here's third spot as the fireworks go off. Bromley said, yeah, no, I'll take third spot any day. Dan Bromley, best of the year, by the way, just behind him. Cole Fredrickson in his third race of the season, his best fourth. But what a weekend for Dominic Calindris. It was a perfect night. We rolled this thing out of the truck, uh, didn't change a thing. My dad uh, might have changed some suspension things, but uh, otherwise it was just higher pressure from there. Um, felt great, came out first practice and set fast time and had fast time since then. Uh, but um, it's, it's working great. Uh, I can't thank my dad enough for helping me and sticking with me through all these races. Kyle Johnson had the lead over Fisher by three, but with a 14th by the Michigan man, sees him slide back by 11, with Ryan Wells 18 away from the top spot. If you're watching this show Tuesday, August 5th, tonight, Tuesday night from South Dakota, AMA Pro Flat Track on FansChoice.tv, live from Black Hills Speedway in Rapid City. Coverage begins at 6 p.m. East, so check out all the great race action on FansChoice.tv. TV. Let's get you back on the motocross track and back to Loretta Lynn's ranch for some 450A moto results. A man without a ride after winning last year's 450A class, number one plated Luke Reslin was fighting to show people why he had the number one plate and that he deserves to be in the pro ranks. And this year at Loretta's, he was spectacular. Looking at the final moto of the week, Kawasaki mounted Chris Aldridge, who finds himself on his way to the Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki team for the remainder of the pro season, put on the pressure. But in the end, it was not enough, as Renslin takes his second moto win of the week. Aldridge started off the week in the catbird seat, winning moto number one, with Daniel Baker on the KTM in third, and Renslin, ultimately, that would be the battle for the championship. Moto two saw Renslin eat closer to his defense, with Nick Gaines a strong second and Aldridge third, Baker in the fourth spot. With things so close in the overall, Moto3 was the deciding factor, as Luke Renslin closed the deal when it counts and takes his second victory of the week in the 450A class, with Aldridge second, Keith Tucker outgunning Nick Gaines for third. For the second year in a row, Luke Renslin claims the Amateur National Championship in the 450A class. When the totals were counted, Aldridge was second overall, Baker third, Nick Gaines just missing out with his 6-2-4 finishes in fourth. Now, let's get you back to Loretta's and more with Jason Wygant. Thanks, Greg. Kind of a new situation when we leave here at the Rocky Mountain ATV MC AMA Amateur National Motocross Championships presented by Amsoil. Back in the day, most riders used this event to launch themselves into a pro career. But now the pro teams have gotten a lot smarter with their scouting and have signed amateur riders in advance. So usually the top amateurs have pro deals locked up. There was one rider, though, that was looking for one, and that's Luke Rensland of the Horton Yamaha amateur team. He won the 450A championship last year, couldn't get a ride, decided to stay as an amateur one more time, and he made good on it. He defended his 450A championship successfully, and he shadowed RJ Hampshire, this year's outstanding amateur, all the way down to the end of their final moto together, finishing close second. His reward? He's got a pro ride now with CycleTrader.com, Rock River Yamaha. He'll make his debut at Unadilla alongside Hampshire. We'll see how Luke Rensland out of New Jersey can perform for this new pro ride. Thanks, Jason. Great stuff. Now for some interesting pro moto news. Back in the winter of 2003, RacerX Illustrated featured a photo of Jeremy McGrath on their cover. 
one of many, many covers for the King of Supercross. But what made that 2003 cover special was the fact that McGrath was riding a KTM, having switched to orange from blue in the twilight of his career. But then the sun set much faster than anyone expected. Jeremy only raced the KTM twice at a couple of World Supercross rounds in Europe. Then he announced his retirement. Well, the gang at Racer X always thought that would be the most amount of coverage a rider would ever get for the least amount of races, just two, on one particular brand of motorcycle. It turns out they were wrong. Last winter, the magazine featured a cover shot of Davey Millsaps testing his brand new Rockstar Energy KTM, the team having switched from yellow to orange for the 2014 season. But no sooner did Millsaps and the team start testing their new bikes before Davey had to undergo reconstructive knee surgery. After finishing runner-up in the Monster Energy Supercross in 2013, Millsaps sat out the entire 2014 season to rehab the knee. Well, on Monday, Davey Millsaps posted this brief statement on his Instagram account. Quote, What's up, everyone? Just wanted to let you guys know that I got released from my contract three days ago. And I can't thank everyone at Rockstar Energy KTM enough for the great two years we had. I also got released to ride now, and I'm really looking forward to what the future holds. Although there's been no official word yet, we're pretty certain that Davey's future will be tinted green, as in Monster Energy Kawasaki green. As a result, Davey Millsaps now replaces Jeremy McGrath as the rider who got the most amount of coverage, the least amount of races on any given brand. While McGrath races KTM twice, Millsaps never even went to the starting gate on his. Regardless, we can't wait to see Millsaps back on the track in 2015. You can watch all the great practice and race action this weekend from New York and the Red Bull Unadilla National. You can do that on the web, promotocross.com slash live. 10.30 a.m. East is practice, the pre-show is at 12.15, and Moto1 starts at 1 p.m., followed by Moto2 at 3 p.m. You can also watch it on television. Mav TV has 1 p.m. East Coast, Live Moto 1, followed by 3 p.m. on the East. NBC Sports Network, live with the 450s, followed by the 250s at 4 p.m. What you just saw was three-time Mountain Dew ATV MX National Champ Chad Wienan doing what he does best. And you saw the highlights last week on how Chad wrapped up his third championship in a row. So now please welcome the number one plate to the show, Chad Wienan. What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing good. How are you guys? Yeah, doing real well, thanks. And congratulations on those three championships. A hat trick. You, you a hockey fan? Uh, not much of a hockey fan, but uh, the three-peat sounds good. Yeah, the three-peat was, was incredible. Now, a lot of people out there tuning into the show introduced to ATV racing for the first time and may not know you as well. So give us a little bit of background, a little bit of information. Where are you from and how long have you been racing ATVs? Well, I'm uh, from Galena, Illinois, uh, northwest part of Illinois, and uh, I've been racing ATVs since I was 16 years old, and I'm 29 now, so it's going on 13 years. Wow, an incredible. Um, how did you get involved in ATV racing? Well, just kind of, you know, riding around the, the, you know, I grew up on a farm and uh, the Wienan family is a big family and uh, just uh, had a lot of acreage and just, you know, grew up riding and, uh, you know, didn't get my first ATV till I was about 12 years old. So kind of started late, but, you know, I just had a real niche for it. And uh, my first uh, event that I went to, I ended up winning the first moto in B class and ended up crashing out the second moto and the machine actually ran myself it ran me over and i've just been hooked ever since so kind of funny i've been hooked ever since you get run over by your machine and i'm hooked ever since that that's the sign of a true champ so um three in a row it's 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 quite a feat um you know tell me about this year about your your march to the championship to the number one plate wrapping it up one race early well i mean we just had a, like a phenomenal year of you know just having great starts and you know, we kept ourselves out of trouble and, you know, the worst moto finish that I got was third and, um, you know, just been able to stay consistent all year long. And, you know, the 
the Wiener Motorsports Yamaha is just a great machine and you know we're we're pumped to be on a machine that we can trust and get get us through every single moto. Now you're six foot three, a bigger guy. As it relates to the motorcycle side of things, I think oftentimes we hear the story that, you know, it's it's more of a made for jockey type of a sport. You know, you want to be light, you want to be agile in terms of uh, motorcycle riding, but ATV seems to be different. Do you feel that there's an advantage that you have because of your size and being able to control the machine better than some of your competitors? Yeah, I mean, I see it being, you know, a lot of pluses and minuses, you know, being the bigger machine that that it is, you know, it's uh, it can be closing in on 400 pounds, and you got to be able to manhandle this thing around, and you know, just try and uh, try and show it where you want to go instead of it trying to bowl you around, and you know, just being like a lot of the tracks that we go to, you know, they can get roughed up and beat up, and you know, you got to be able to be able to maneuver the machine around, and you know, even through the rough stuff, I use my legs as you know as you know more travel on the machine, and you know, a lot of the other guys. Uh, you know, being, uh, you know, under six foot, you know, base riders that they uh, tend to struggle a little bit through the rougher sections. What is it about racing an ATV that excites you? Is it the competition? Is it the cornering, the jumps, the whoops? You know, what is it that really kind of sets itself apart from all the other great things about winning? I would say probably the biggest thing is when you have like a day where everything goes so well and, you know, you just flow and everything's almost like effortless and you know just being able to ride at that potential is you know what everybody strives to be able to do and it almost seems like you can't do anything wrong and you know it's there, there's days that you don't get the opportunity to ride like that and then there are days where you know things just go so well kind of like how things went at red bud the final like uh and you know a couple you know last round you know everything just went so so fluid and so well I didn't feel like I had to ride ride very hard to ride at that pace. How will you be approaching the final round this weekend? Is it just like, ah, I'm cool with everything? Or are you going to go out and try to put a stamp on this championship? What's up? I mean, I, I definitely want to go out and, uh, you know, end the season on a high note. And, you know, my mechanic, he's never won at uh, Loretta's at all for 15 years. And, you know, he's a... Uh, He's itching to go out and get a win, and I haven't won there for a couple of years now. And you know, I'm ready to go out there and, you know, get a win for him, and you know, also put a stamp on the season and give the rest of the riders something to think about the rest of the year. <laughs> and finally, Chad, you're 29 now. How long can you go? What are you thinking? Well, I mean, I've always, you know, just the way that I've kind of looked at things, you know, as long as I'm having fun and you know, riding competitive, and you know, just. You know, enjoying, uh, you know, enjoying my life, and you know, it's uh, it's kind of one of those things where you know, the day if it hits me, you know, whenever it hits me, that's one, you know, that's the day that I, you know, hang up the boots. But I'm having such a blast riding right now, and you know, I don't see it happening for you know quite a few years, and you know, I I still feel really healthy, and you know, don't feel all beat up, and you know, I having trouble walking or anything like that. So you know, we're, I'm I'm just having a blast riding. I'm going to keep doing it as long as I can. All right, well, good luck this weekend at Loretta's and congratulations on those three championships. And thank you so much for joining us here on the Racer X Show. Uh, thanks, Greg. Have a good one. You too. We want you to get out and see racing. And there's a lot of it this week and weekend. Tonight, Rapid City, South Dakota, you can see AMA Pro Flat Track. Then Friday, they shoot all the way over to Indianapolis, Indiana and the Indy Mile. Lucas Oil Motocross heads to New York and Unadilla. Go check out the championship chase and the new pros. Chad Weenan takes his show to Loretta Lynn's Ranch in Tennessee for the final round of the Mountain Dew ATV MX National Championship. The MotoGP World Championship comes off of summer break and lands in Indianapolis at the famed Yard of Bricks. That's all weekend long. And for you Enduro folks, the Kenda National Enduro Championship presented by Moose Racing stops in Grand Junction, Colorado. Oh, and, and one more thing this week, in Ohio, Wednesday night, it's something called Moto Enduro. It'll be at the Athens County Fairgrounds. I've never heard of it. Well, it looks something like this. The RacerX Show with Greg White is being presented by Chaparral Motorsports. 
visit Chaparral Motorsports online at chapmoto.com. All right, if you want to get in touch with us, shoot me an email. It's greg at racertv.com. If you want us to put your local races on the upcoming events, greg at racertv.com. That's it for now. We certainly hope you enjoyed the show. We sure did. Special thanks to my guest, Chad Weenan, for Skyping in. We appreciate that. Follow us on our social media links. Like us, follow us, do all that stuff. You can follow me personally on Twitter. It's at Greg White. And for the fine crew here at the Racer X Show, presented by Chaparral Motorsports and Racer TV, I'm Greg White. Remember, we are all racing all the time. See ya.